Hey guys, Trevor here with eCommerce Paradise, and today I'm going to talk about the biggest mistakes people usually make when they're first starting their high-ticket dropshipping store. If you're first time watching one of my videos or listening to one of my podcasts, definitely get your free niches list for high-ticket dropshipping at ecommerceparadise.com slash niches. So the biggest mistake I usually see with people when they first start out is they don't know what niche to choose. And it's totally understandable because there's tons of niches to choose from. So the first thing you should do is research. And um, you should research you know, like keyword search volume, you should research to try to find your ideal competitors, and you should research to see how many suppliers are available in the marketplace, and get an idea of how much competition there is overall. Um, your overall goal is to choose a niche that is high, uh, high suppliers but low competition. And it's always like kind of easier said than done, you know? So it's easy to find niches that have tons of search volume but then they have a lot of competition, um, niches that have a lot of suppliers, a lot of competition, niches that have very little competition, very little search volume, um, sometimes have very few suppliers as well. So it's going to be hard to start any kind of a store in that niche. Now um, the biggest mistake I usually see people make is either not doing the research ahead of time and or uh, just starting like a general store, like a broad store. And what usually people start with with general and broad stores is something in the furniture category. Uh, furniture or appliances, kind of stuff in the home. Um, or just like maybe a general outdoor store or something like that. Um, so just know that generally speaking, general stores, broad stores, stores with more than like 10 or 15 categories of products, um, they're probably not going to convert as well as the niche store in those categories. Um, now, that's not always true, but some of the niches are very particular niches. They're very compl complex niches and they really do require a niche store, a niche focus. Um, imagine going to a big broad store like Target or Walmart and trying to buy a really complex uh, appliance of some sort for your commercial um, you know, kitchen. You have like a restaurant or something like that. You probably wouldn't go to Walmart to buy something like that, right? Because they're just not suited to be able to understand and provide service, provide sales and expertise on that. However, if you went to a store that specifically specialized in um, commercial restaurant equipment, then you'd probably more likely to have some kind of sales staff that's going to be able to help you with your specific needs and understand the products and the warranties and um, you know the features and benefits and be able to recommend the right one for your needs. So just know that um, you know when you first start out, yes, a general store is the easy thing to go with because you're thinking, you know, I can just throw any supplier at the wall and see what sticks. And yes, you might even be able to do that and get some sales, um, but it's just not going to be that scalable. And the reason why a general store is not as scalable it's because usually most people that are doing this are bootstrapping their business. They don't have unlimited funds to throw at Google Ads, to throw at writers or, or people to put up content and get backlinks and stuff like that. Now, if you do have unlimited funds and you do feel like starting another Amazon, just kind of look at their path. Um, Amazon wasn't always the everything store. Even when they started, they were just selling books. So you got to just pick one category to start with and consider scaling later on out of that category a little bit. Um, Amazon really scaled a lot, way farther outside that category, but they really still stick to their books as kind of like their main foundation of why they started. And they have their whole Kindle business and they still do tons of book sales. And so consider that they never really escaped or like left that niche, but that they always sort of just grew out of that niche. So consider what you are best at and um, like what your expertise is or you know what your skill sets are and things like that, what your passions are, things that you're interested in um, and look at high ticket categories of products and kind of do some research and find out which ones are, you know, have a lot of search volume, which is important. The demand is always the most important thing in my opinion. And then look at how many suppliers are available and how many different competitors there are. Um, differentiate broad store competitors from your niche store competitors. And you can really kind of get an idea of what niche you have a better chance of going after and pick a niche um, and set up. And if you, you know, you like multiple niches, then just set up multiple stores. Um, but just consider in the beginning that it does take twice as much work to do two stores as it does to do one. Um, it might not be um, double the cost because you can integrate some things together like you know, one, phone, one account like with Grasshopper a phone system account can do multiple phone numbers and each additional phone number is only $10. So there is kind of an economy of scale when it comes to doing multiple stores. But at the same time you should consider putting all of your effort and energy into one until it's finished 
and or you've gotten like at least 20 or 30 suppliers and you've got plenty of sales going on, you've scaled past the maybe 50 to 100,000 a month in sales level and milestone. Once you kind of hit that, maybe you can consider doing a second store. And um, also the other thing too with scaling is that you really should have a team to help you when you start scaling so that things don't get left behind. So hiring a VA for your customer service and order processing is a really good idea. Hiring another VA maybe to help you with uh, product uploading, supplier onboarding, um, optimization, uh, you know, marketing, things like that is a really good idea with scaling. So hope that helps guys, but I really don't want you guys to make the same mistakes that I've made in the past where um, you know, I started a general store at one point and I just didn't know what I was doing. Um, it's a really good idea to pick a particular category of products and to go deep within that category of products as opposed to just going wide and shallow. So keep that in mind. Uh, wish you guys the best of luck out there. If you guys want help with building and starting a building and scaling a high ticket dropshipping business, please check out my website at ecommerceparadise.com. I have a full masterclass for high ticket dropshipping. I also provide services and resources that are free. So definitely go check it out, ecommerceparadise.com. And my team also does something that nobody else does, which is a turnkey high ticket dropshipping custom store build service where we won't just build you a store, we'll actually build you a business around it and launch it for you and then hand it off to you and you can kind of take it and run with it. And that usually does really good for people that are looking to uh, build one of these stores and have one as an, as an asset, but not necessarily do it all themselves, but kind of just like take it and run with it. So uh, check, check that out guys, ecommerceparadise.com. Um, my name is Trevor Fenner and I look forward to talking to you in the next one. See you out there.